Hello Divination and welcome. Today's tutorial is about styling buttons with Divi's background options. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let me show you how we manage to style these buttons. To achieve these designs, all you're going to need is one video, which we're going to use in our first example. And throughout this, we're going to be using a lot of CSS and a lot of custom colors for our buttons. If you'd like to follow along step by step to achieve exactly the same results, I'll leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right, so without wasting a lot of time, let's get started. Okay, so let's start off by creating a brand new page. So I'm here in my admin dashboard. So I'm going to come over here to pages, click on add new. I'm just going to call this page BTN and then click on use the Divi Builder. So I'm going to go straight into my visual builder. Right, so let's start off by uh, adding some columns. So I'm going to click this plus button here. We're going to add a single column and we're going to add a button module. So here's our button module. So here on the button text, you can add whatever you want. So on this one, I'm just going to call this check it out. Okay, I'm going to come over here to design, click on alignment and then make sure that my alignment is set to center. Go on to the text, make sure my text is set to light because what we're going to do is we're going to have a video playing in the background. Okay, we're just going to go back to the content and make sure that we add a link. But in my case, I'm just going to add a blank link because this link doesn't need to um, go anywhere. So back here on the design, I'm going to click on button and then click on use custom styles for button. Now this is going to allow me to make more customizations to my button. So on the uh, text size, I'm going to make sure that this is set to... 48 and then what we need to do here is we need this button to fill in the whole sp the, all the space so i'm going to come over here to my advanced tab click on custom css and in the main element we need to add the css code which says with 100 percent so this is going to cover the whole width of our row so for now uh, all our settings are fine i'm going to go ahead now and save and then it's time to go into our row settings so i'm going to click on row settings click on background and I'm going to click on our linear background. Click this plus sign to add our colors. Next, we're going to come over here to our design, click on sizing, and then we're going to click on use custom width and set this to 500. Next, click on spacing. And then on the custom padding, we're going to add zero to the top, zero to the right, zero to the bottom and the left. Finally, we need to go into the advanced tab, click on custom CSS, and in the main element, we need to add the CSS code, which is gonna add a border radius of 10 pixels. Now that the row settings have been updated to have a custom width and padding, two things have been accomplished. First, we have successfully set a custom width for the button, and second, we now have another layer of background options that we can use to style our button. So this is really cool. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to add a video to the background of this button. So we're gonna come back here to our content, click on background, and right here, let's start off by uh, adding our linear uh, gradient colors. So I'm gonna click on the first color here and just slide this down so we can get the RGBA value. So I'm gonna paste my RGBA value in here, like that. Go to our second color and do the same. Paste our color, our RGBA value here. And then now it's time to add our video in the background. So I'm gonna come over here to my last tab, click on this, and then we need to add our video. So I'm gonna click this plus button here. So if you have a video in your media library, you can go ahead and click it. But in my case, I need to upload my video to the media library. So I'm gonna come over here to upload files, click on select files. And then in my downloads folder, this is the video I need to upload. So I'm gonna double click on it. And now it's uploading to my media library. And it seems that it's done it already. So I'm going to click on upload a video. So now we can see that our video is in the background and you can see it playing here. So what I need to do next is to come here and adjust the angle. So here I'm going to change 180 degrees to 256. I'm going to come over here to my start position and set it to 64. And my end position is fine at 100%. Now we can go ahead and save. And then finally, we need to go into the button module. So I'm gonna click this setting, uh, the settings icon, click on design. I'm gonna add my button background color. It's gonna be an RGBA color, color. So I'm gonna paste my color in here. 
And then I'm going to add my border color. So I'm just going to paste my, paste my hexadecimal here. So finally, we need to add the CSS code to fix this border radius. So I'm going to come over here to my expand settings, click on the settings uh, of the page, and then come over here to advanced, click on custom CSS, and then we need to paste this CSS code. So now you can see that our, our border radius has now been fixed. So now you can go ahead and save and then exit the Visual Builder. So let's move on to our second example. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate this section and uh, use uh, my settings of the first button as the starting point. So I'm going to duplicate this and then we're going to go back into our settings here. And instead of check it out, we're going to change that to subscribe like that. The link can stay as it is as a blank link. So I'm going to save this for now and then I'm going to go into my row settings. And then what we need to hear, do here, which is very important, is to get rid of this video. So I'm going to click delete to get rid of the video. And I'm going to come over here to our linear gradient and adjust the colors. So I'm going to start with my first color. I'm going to paste my hexadecimal color. Click on the second one. I'm going to paste it as well. Now let's come over here to our gradient direction. Now this needs to be set at 270 and the start position needs to be set at 50 and for our end position instead of 100 this time it's going to be set to zero so now we can see that we have two equal halves there with different colors next we're going to come over here to our column one uh, background gradient so we're going to click on this linear gradient click this plus button here click on select color and then we're going to paste our first color here. Now, now the color we're going to paste here is going to be our RGBA value. So I'm just going to come in here and paste it within the brackets like that. Come over here, click the second color. And again, it's an RGBA value. So I'm going to highlight the text, I mean the, um, the numbers, and paste it. Excellent. So what we need to do next here is to change the uh, gradient direction. So like before, this is going to be set to 270. Start position is going to be set at 50. And then the end position is going to be set as 0. In fact, this needs to be set at 180. Now that we have this checkered design, all we need to do now is to go to the button module settings. So I'm going to save this for now. Come over here to our module settings. Click on design. Now this is where now you can go into the text. Or in fact, you can go into the button and adjust these options. So you can either make uh, make things bold, you can add some space, you can add pretty much whatever you want. So let's say you want to make the button um, bold. So you can just click this button here. And if you need to add some letter spacing, you can just add your letter spacing like that. If you want to make it all caps, I mean, you see where I'm going with this. So pretty much this is what you need to do. And already we have created a pretty much new design of this button so once you're done with that go ahead and save and now it's time to go in and create a new style so as we did before all i have to do now is to duplicate this whole section and use these settings as my base settings so i'm going to come over here to my row settings click on the gear icon click on background so what I'm going to do is to start by getting rid of these colors that I used initially. So I'm going to click on my first color here, add my RGBA value, add my second color. Now, instead of having this set to linear as we were doing before, we need to change this to radial. Here on the start position, we need to start at, at 50%. But here for our end position, this needs to be set to 100. So now we can see we have this beautiful color blending going on with this radial gradient type. Next, let's come over here and do some adjustments on the gradient on the uh, column one background gradients. So I'm going to come over here, select the color and we are going to change this color. So this color is going to stay as, as it is. And then we're going to come over here to our start position and set to 50 which is already is and then the end position needs to be set at 100 so I'm just going to drag this all the way until I get to 100. Now the most important thing here which I forgot to do was to set this column gradient type to radial as we have here on the top to really get this effect. 
Finally, all we have to do now is to save. And then we need to go into this module settings here to change the button text. So I'm going to set my text as contact me. Click on um, design. Click on button. Now we can change the text from the normal default font to a font called Crafty Girls. Like that. Reduce the size a little bit. In fact, I'll start with the letter spacing. Adjust the button size because that's a bit too big. And then I'm going to come over here to add button icon. I'm going to say yes. And I'm going to choose an icon that works with this. So I'm just going to look for a heart. And here it is. So if you want this icon to show uh, all the time, all you need to do is to come over here where it says only show icon on hover on button, set it to no, and then you can have your heart always showing all the time. So pretty much that's, the, that's it. That's what you need to do to achieve this design. So uh, you can create new colors that can match your branding, but pretty much this is the process of getting all these different types of uh, button layouts. Now, without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's do the next one. So I'm gonna go ahead and save and uh, duplicate this as we did before. So as before, we're going to go into the row settings. So I'm gonna click the gear icon, click on background, and I'm gonna start by adding all our gradient colors. So I'm gonna replace this color, click on the next one. Again, I'm gonna paste my hex color. So our start position here is going to be set to 19 and our end position is going to be set to zero. Next, let's go to our column one and adjust our RGBA values here. So I'm going to click on the first color, paste my RGBA value, click on the second one. I want to paste my color. And here for our column start position, we're going to set this to 32. And our, co our column end position is needs to be set to zero. So now we can see we have this bull eye, bullseye effect happening here, which is pretty cool. So next, let's go ahead and save. And then now it's time to go into our module settings. Then we're just going to change this font to say buy. Now we need to go into design and click on button. So we can adjust um, the font. So the font I'm going to use here is pretty much open sans. So you can use any font you need in this case, but uh, I'll just use this one. Next, I'm going to come over here to my icon and remove it. And then I'm going to increase my size. But again, you can just adjust this to whatever, you know, fits your, your design. So I want to leave mine at about, say, 46. And I'm also going to increase my letter spacing like that. So that's how you create a bullseye effect. Let's save this. And let's move on to the next one. So I'm going to duplicate this. In our next example, we are going to do an image button. So this one is going to be quite interesting. So we're going to come over here and go into our row settings. Click on background. So this time we're going to add an image. So I'm going to click this third tab. Click the plus button to add our image. And this is the first image I need to add. Now, if you don't have images in your media library, again, you have to navigate to your images on your computer and upload them onto your media library. So in my case, I don't need to do that because I have my image in my media library. So I'm going to select my image, click on upload image. So you can see already my image is showing in the background. The only thing I'm going to change here is the blend mode. So I'm going to set it to multiply. And then I'm going to get rid of these colors that I set initially. So I'm going to come over here to my gradient and delete my colors. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add brand new colors. So I'm going to click this plus button, click on my first color and add my first RGBA value like that. Click on my second color. I want to paste it in here. So here, let's change our gradient type from radial to linear. So here, let's change this gradient direction to 63. And then next we need to adjust our start position to 50% and our end position to 100. Right, so we can see here in the preview that our image is not really showing. So we need to come back here to our third tab, which is the images tab. So here on the actual signs, we need to set this to cover. So now we get to see more of our image. Our background image position needs to be set to center. And we don't want this to repeat. So let's set it to no repeat. So now we get to see most of our image, which is pretty cool.
Next, we need to come over here to our column one gradient and click this uh, second tab for our linear gradient. Click this plus button to add our first color. So I'm gonna add my first color in here, paste it. And then we're gonna change our column gradient type from radial to linear. Next, we're gonna add our second color. And then we're gonna change this to 139, 12 for our start position and our end position can be left at uh, 0%, that's fine. So now we have this effect on the top left, which is looking really nice. So this is looking good so far. Let's go ahead and save. And now it's time to go into our button settings. So I'm gonna click the module settings and then our text, since this looks like a concert, we're gonna say, get tickets. Click the design tab, click on button. And this is where we get to make even more adjustments. So I'm gonna start off by uh, decreasing our letter spacing to maybe about two pixels. We're gonna change the font to Leto, like that. So we're gonna come over here to our button background color and add a background color. So this is gonna be an RGBA, so I'm gonna paste my value in here. We're gonna come over here to the border color and paste our hexadecimal value. So now we have this nice border around our button. Now we need to find an icon that works with this design. So let's look for something that resembles some tickets. So here we go. And then we're gonna come over here to only show icon on hover for button from yes to no. So now we have our icon and that button really looks cool. So what you can then do as well is you can come over here to your hover text and your hover background color and change that. Okay, so now that we have our button, let's go ahead and save. Now let's move on to our final design. So again, as before, I'm gonna duplicate this section and use these settings as my starting point. So I'm gonna come over here to my row settings. So for this example, we're gonna do a portrait button. So what we're gonna do in this example is we're gonna go ahead and click on, on background and this time we're gonna start with our column one background. So let's click on the third tab, which is our image tab, click the plus button, and we need to upload our image. So the image I'm gonna use is this one right here. Click upload an image. So for our settings here, I'm gonna select on fit and then click on center left. And then here we don't need this to repeat. So I'm gonna say no repeat. And then for our column background image blend, we're gonna select luminosity. Next, let's add our background color. So I'm gonna come over here. In fact, I'm gonna first delete this because we don't need this anymore. So I'm gonna come over here to our background, click the plus button, and I'm gonna add my color. So I'm gonna come over here to my column one background and delete my first color and add my solid color here by clicking this plus button like that. Next, we're gonna come over here to our gradient and delete all our colors here. Click this plus button. So once we're done with that, let's go ahead and save. And now it's time to go into our module settings. Let's click on the button text. So this one here, we're gonna call let's talk. And then we're gonna come over here to design, click on button so we can adjust all these settings. So let's start off with the alignment. So we're gonna click on button alignment from change it from center to right. And then we're gonna come over here to our button. So in our custom styles, this is where we get to do all our adjustments. So I can make this text size a bit smaller. So before we make any more changes, let's start with our button border color because this yellow here is quite annoying for this design. So I'm gonna change that. So we're gonna come over here to our button letter spacing, change that to three. And then for our button font, we're gonna change that to happy monkey. And then this text which says let's talk would fit very well with these chat bubbles. And then finally, what you could do here is for the hover background color, you can just change that to, I mean, any color you want, just to show that um, the button is active. So you can see now that I, when I mouse over this, it has this hover effect. So pretty much this is what you need to do to achieve these uh, designs. So once you're done with that, just go ahead and save and then save the whole page. And finally, you can just exit the Visual Builder so there you have it thank you all for watching if you like this video please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms by doing so you'll be notified every time we release new videos until next time thanks for watching and see you soon